Hello and welcome to Anxiety Hacks. I'm your host, Kate Hudson Hall, and thank you so much for listening. So now we are here to talk about anxiety. We've got a very special guest today, but first I just want to mention about my new book, also called Anxiety Hacks. Now within the book, there are many, many, it's packed full actually of different ways, different techniques and tools and tips to be able for you to be able to break those difficult, anxious behaviors. So the reason I packed the book full of so many different ways is because we are all different. And so it's finding those right tools for you to be able to break those difficult behaviors. Now, let's dive in with our very special, special guest today. His name is Neil Long. Now, he is a mental health advocate and a DJ and a radio presenter and also a stand-up comedian. He's also a podcast educator and teaches how to start up your own podcast with other features such as editing of, po- of the podcast service. Neil has, has also had his own challenges with anxiety and he's here to share, to share how he worked his way through this and share his experiences. So Neil, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. You missed out uh, absolutely killer ladies, man, in your intro. Um, just add, add that onto the biography. <laughs> Whoopsie. Sorry, <laughs> I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kate. It's absolutely lovely to be here. Thank you for that lovely intro. And I love your book. It's brilliant. And you, you're so right that everyone is different. And I think the important thing is not to, because if, if I buy a book of any anything in this ilk, sometimes there's so much information, it can be overwhelming. And it's just a question of finding the ones that work for you and to give the people the chance that they can pick and choose for the ones that work personally for them is a brilliant thing. And you've covered it from so many angles. It's brilliant. Thank you, Neil. That's very kind of you. So let's talk about you. Let's talk about uh, your difficulties with anxiety. Anxiety. Um, anxiety. I, I haven't suffered that much with anxiety relatively recently. Right. Um, I can tell you but anxiety that's good. Is, is close cousins with depression. They're like kissing cousins, right? Mm. And that they're they're a marriage made in hell, but they are they are very linked. But it is possible to have one without the other, or both. Um, ideally, we would have neither. Um, it's interesting that you say they are patterns, and of course, the inference in there is. The pattern was put there, therefore the pattern can be changed or repatterned to something else. Absolutely. And that's a very empowering thought. But the very nature of anxiety, it's disempowering because you feel like a victim. Yeah. You, you feel like a victim of circumstance rather than the creator of your life. And they're two complete it's either one or the other. You, you, you can't you can't be both. And I think most people fall along this spectrum. Um, well, I can handle this, but if that happened, that would be that would be the end for me, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that will spark up. I can up handle anxiety. this, but I couldn't. I couldn't handle that, if you know what I mean. So yeah. people tend to sort of, and we we all fears, and people tend to. I think I did. I say people. I'm talking about me really. Tend to. I should say I tended to catastrophize. What if that happened? What if that happened? What if that happened? And this is the whole thing with anxiety because it's always future based. It's always about something that's going to come up in the future. It's never in the past. That's already yeah. happened. That's a known quantity. You know about that. But anxiety is the future, right? And one thing it does stop you doing is being in the present moment, which, as we all know, and I know you're a teacher of this wonderful discipline of mindfulness, it's all about the present moment. And when you do truly ground yourself in the present moment, there's very little anxiety can do because you ask yourself the question, is there anything to be worried about now, right now? I mean, there are certain situations like, I don't know, if someone, I don't know, out of the blue, I saw someone running across my garden pointing a gun at me, that would that would tri- quite rightly trigger an anxious reaction, fight or flight. That's, that's what it's designed for, emergency situations. But I think a lot of us are in that all the time and yes. so much, and particularly triggered by the pandemic. And the thing is, 
we're not hunter gatherers anymore. We can't run it off anymore. We can't run all those neurochemicals out of our bodies if the boss chews us out or the baby's crying or there's an unpaid bill. So it kind of stores in the body and eventually it's got nowhere to go. And we kind of become, I suppose, if you like, almost emotionally constipated. <laughs> if, if you know what I mean, it's, it's an awful metaphor, but I think you know what I mean. Well, absolutely. Um, and I think you're right. I think, you know, with the pandemic, you know, the, you know, we were locked down and then the doors were open again and then we were locked down again. And then now with the, the cost of living crisis and the war in Ukraine, it's hardly surprising that people's anxiety is, you know, kind of stayed up at that heightened level. And it's easy to believe that the world is a bad place and dangerous and a belief like that will create anxiety but the truth of it generally lies somewhere in the middle yes in the middle of a war zone obviously it's dangerous but are you in danger now probably not watching this you know you're probably watching it at your own leisure you know i'm asking not uk but asking you you the watcher are, are you in danger now what's happening now in the present moment now this is all very um all very fresh in my mind because i've recently just come off a, a time of recording on this monday afternoon uh, from 12 to 1 on Monday afternoons and on Wednesdays, I'm on MRS, which is Men's Radio Station, which is a station in Mumbai, by Russ Kane. Do you remember Russ Kane from Capital Radio? Well, I came on the I came on the radio on on the radio station. I you? know. I haven't forgotten. I was saying it for the benefit of the listeners. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, you, you were meant to act surprised and go, yes, of course I do. And I could have got all show busy. But hey, we missed it. Oh, right. but yes, of course I do. Russ Kane from Capital. Russ Kane and his funny little plane. Uh, he now runs... Um, Radio station all about mental mental health and well being. I remember um, him from the capital days. Mm. Yes, and indeed from coming on the show, which was more important because we oh. wanted you on the show because you are a fantastic teacher of mental health and many disciplines. Um, and he had this chap on this brilliant young psychiatrist who uh, I've actually got permission to get his details and pass them on to you because I think he'll be of so much value to your listeners because he's got strategies stra um, from his point of view of dealing with dealing with anxiety and many sort of you know techniques and sort of that and it's uh, I, th I thought oh yes that would that would butter kate's parsnips and i thought we'd be uh very good butter for my parsnip <laughs> to, use, yeah, to, to use your metaphor to use that metaphor um <laughs> so i'll make that introduction later obviously i won't do it while we're recording this podcast but um <laughs> but it is it is fresh in my mind but he teaches from his own experience like we all do of course yeah. and it's inspiring when you see people who are just as ordinary and extraordinary as you just the same as you we're all human that connects us all love it or hate it we're all human and we've all got similar there are similarities between us all and differences but it, but in the similarity in the sense we can all suffer from anxiety but the difference is some people have learned techniques to manage it probably born out of difficult experience but they're born anyway and so they're there um and it is possible to to manage it and to overcome it and he was very honest he said you know I did have a, a panic attack after I've been working with a group of people and I didn't say this but I thought well I'm not surprised being in that atmosphere for that long you know and I think what he was doing was working so hard with them and being so professional reading between the lines but may not have been practicing self-care I don't know um but we all know self-care is really important but anyway upshot was he had a panic attack but then he had this strategy to deal with it and I thought oh that's that's clever. And I'm sure there's many similar things in your book as well. But the whole the point is there are there are techniques to deal with anxiety because it is always future based. It's yeah. always future based. It's always something's going to happen in the future and it's going to be bad and I won't know how to handle it. And we bring that kind of future worry into the present moment when it may not even happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if it does happen, then chances are it won't be as bad as you thought it was going to be. And you will handle it. My mum dying was really horrible. And I'd worried about that all my life. And yeah, it was horrible, but it wasn't as bad as I imagined it to be. And now I can put it more in context after, after a healing process, but we can put it in context. Yeah. And I had, um, and grief is very difficult. And I've got much, much compassion to anyone going through grief. It can really mess with your mind. Mm. But it's really important to have the right people around you. I'm going from one subject to another. Sorry, I'm just waxing lyrical here um and when you do have that support network you're, you're safe to be yourself it's allowed to be yourself you're allowed to have these feelings you don't have to have this mask of perfection on all the time you're human you're allowed to have human feelings it's part of the game of being human that you will have human feelings not all of which are pleasant however you can just let them pass through you and what i did find with the grief triggers that they became less intense less regular and less long 
By doing what? Um, just by sitting with it and just allowing it to be and with the right people around me talking about how I felt again and again sometimes. No, actually having, allowing thing. yourself to have those feelings. Allow myself to have the feelings, but now I'm getting to a place where I don't necessarily need the other people so much. And that's a good place to be because yeah. it's quite a burden. It can be quite, and I don't want to be a burden on anyone. You know, someone talking about the same old thing again and again and again. But I was lucky enough to be with someone who was also grieving so we could share and then we sort of shared each other's healing process. So we weren't burdensome to each other. It was a mutually enriching and energizing relationship rather than a draining one, you know. Yeah. Um, and I would always recommend find a, a therapist because not all people are trained to deal with these things. The average human being in the street, maybe not unless they've had the experience. Um, so we would talk and we would process and all that sort of thing. And it, for some reason, it all came up this morning. And I and I thought, right, mindfulness. So I just let myself be with it. And I was on, on air on Radio Jackie at the time where I did the breakfast show. And I thought, right, I'll just let that be there. And all that uncomfortableness, all that kind of looking around, wanting to get out. I don't know where I go to. It's that feeling of wanting to get out. But where yeah, do you to go? to escape, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, escape what? It's myself, I'm trying to escape. And I remember um, when I came to your mindfulness class, you, you taught um, turning towards, and I never quite understood that. So rather than trying to run away from the feeling, I just turned towards it, or at the very least, let it be there. And do you know what? Within two hours it passed, and I had the realisation that I'm really just processing the shadows of the past, because in this present moment, what I was thinking about is not happening. Yeah, yeah. That happened two years ago three years ago yeah? yeah and when you get that kind of time difference um I know people are leery of the phrase time is a great healer but if you replace the word time with distance bit of NLP coming in here and there's a distance from it in the context of time sounds a bit university doesn't it but I realized it it really was shadows from the past it wasn't present moment reality it was present it was present moment thinking of the past which just needed processing being with letting it flow on into the next present moment into the next present moment as it were does that make any sense yeah yeah and I think a good way to explain it is shadows of the past um is a really good way to explain it yeah I mean but people are. go through shit things there's there's no question about that today people are going through shit things and people are going through wonderful things you know that more more attention is given to the bad stuff that goes on than the good and that's another thing we will do it in our own lives and media loves it you know if it bleeds it leads always will which is a horrible saying from the world of media but i'm afraid it's true but it is our choice what we turn our attention to and if we turn our attention to the present you can come to the realization yes it was shit but i've learned from it and this is present now this is what is present now not that and the fact is it's not present now it literally is just those those shadows those hangovers from the past and why yeah. would you want to carry those around for any longer than serves you why wouldn't you want to drop that burden? Yeah, Would absolutely. the person you're grieving want you to carry that burden? No. If I've shuffled off my mortal coil, you know, I'm sure my daughter would grieve, but I wouldn't want her to carry it with her for the rest of her life and never affect the rest of her life and her chances and her mental health and opportunities. Christ, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like your parents wouldn't want you to do that. Likewise, yeah, exactly. Hmm. Um, and I think it was interesting that you, you know, that this morning you recognised that feeling and then you allowed it to be there. Mm. And I think that's important for people to hear rather than just trying to, you know, distract yourself and push it away in somehow. Well, it was it was timely. It was all, it all sort of unfolded because that happened on Radio Jackie this morning. And then I did men's radio talking to this wonderful young psychiatrist who um, has developed an app for helping people moderate their drinking and I thought ah um and I and I mentioned it to him it, it just it just sort of made sense because he was talking about coping strategies and what people normally do when they get a, and you will know this very well in your work as well you know pick your favorite addiction you know people have bad feelings they don't want to feel them they don't understand this wisdom of turning towards it and so they don't have to feel them they might drink smoke a joint watch porn overwork pick your favorite we've we've all got them do you, do you know what I mean yeah um and but none of that but it's a good intention generally but the strategy is poor so for example if you or if one drinks too much to numb feelings the feelings will still be there along with the hangover when the alcohol's worn off and so will the problem it's an innocent attempt to solve a problem but it's the wrong attempt yes 
do, do, do you know do you know what I mean? And I've seen that in friends in friends of my own, and it went really extreme. Um, but ultimately, if you trace it right back, it was an innocent attempt of because he didn't want to understandably feel feelings he didn't want to feel. But I don't. But certainly back then, mindfulness would have been associated with going off to a monastery in Tibet and meditating for 30 years in loincloths before you get any result. You know, now, now we know it changes the brain within eight weeks and we can prove that through neuroscience, That's which amazing. is really exciting. And it just makes um, hope a lot more immediate and, and solution a lot more immediate if we're willing to do the practices, I guess. Yeah. And it's such a hype. And that's great news. And people don't understand what it is, but it's, it is so basic and simple, but it's like you say, it's hugely beneficial. And the, the, the physical changes that they found in the brains is incredible. It literally re rewires the brain, doesn't it? I mean, it first yeah. got my attention when Oxford University started studying mm -hmm. it. And I read that book by Professor Mark Williams, who I love. I love his work. And Danny Penman. I know a little less about him, but I mean, they wrote the book together. It's brilliant. Yeah. And literally measuring, measuring, you know, what's going on in the brain so they can prove it. So look, here's the science. Yes, it changes the brain. Yes, it rewires the brain. And the happiness circuits in the brain, you know, all the ones we want to feel, literally, and I mean literally, this might sound a bit weird, but they light up. It literally is light, real light, and they light up when after eight weeks of mindfulness. So yeah. when, when someone says, oh, that really lights me up, literally, if someone's experiencing joy, you must have seen it. If someone's in their joy or they look really radiant and well-being or maybe even particularly sexy, they've got a glow. They've got a radiant glow, haven't they? Yeah. And yeah, it literally yeah. makes the, it makes you it, it makes you glow. It, it's you can become a glow getter. Ha! That's awfully Americanized. But 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 literally, and if if that is just eight weeks of very simple practice, you know, to to rewire maybe a habit of a lifetime, it it doesn't have to be a struggle it doesn't have to be difficult it's so easy a child could do it it's just a question of doing it and this is where I fall because I can I can talk about it till the cows come home but I have been guilty of being part of the shelf help movement in other words getting a great new book and going that's nice and putting it on the shelf yeah, yeah. you should see yeah. my shelf help collection you know but, <laughs> but ultimately um, as wise guru once said application dear boy application not just knowledge <laughs> knowledge by itself is impotent. Knowledge with application, that is wisdom, oh young guru. And then I probably wanted to punch him, but anyway. <laughs> and what else is what else have you found over the years with um with your anxiety and what's helped? Um I'm 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 delaying because I'm casting my mind back because I do. I have felt very anxious about things. Uh, back then, I think I was in the kind of either don't do it or feel the fear and do it anyway. Right. Which is a bit of a a bit old fashioned now, in the light of what I know now. And why, in the light why is of, that old fashioned? I, um, because you're fighting against the fear and it's grit and determination and nose to the grindstone and I push really hard and I might just push through it, you know, no pain, no gain, all, all of that sort of stuff. And I would argue that that is a bit old fashioned. It's a bit like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut and more subtle, more subtle, slower techniques tend to be better and nurture more well-being than that push through at all costs. I mean, we see people trying to do that and eventually it leads to burnout. Yes. And then their hand is forced and they have to find other ways. Um, and so it, it, it could be, it was just, that was the, but that was the knowledge of the time, wasn't it? There was even a self-help call book, Susan yes, Jeffers, feel, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Feel, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. Um, but that that was not in the time when they were measuring mindfulness in laboratories. That was that was before that, and it's all it's all moved on an awful lot now. So that's that's another reason for hope because things have moved along so much now. There's now so much more understanding, and because of technology, it can be a lot more immediate. You can literally program certain things on the phone to remind you to do something or to have a mindful moment, and even even things that feed back data. You know, if you're wearing a Fitbit, feed the data. Maybe this app, an app, if I do know one that does this, will recognise your trigger points and then give you not only the notification that you're about to be triggered, but also what to do about it. Now, that process would take months in a traditional therapeutic relationship. Gathering that data and working out one solution would take months. This can do them all at once immediately. 
and that's that's, 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 the exciting, isn't it? that's that's the exciting times about the times we live in it's a lot yeah, faster yeah, yeah. Mm. so i think one of the one of the although paradoxically you... i know it's really fast but i would say slow down you've got to kind of slow down to speed up if that makes sense <laughs> but slow your mind down yeah mm. but fast then you results. also use to get the fast tapping, results you? you must slow down yeah but you also use the tapping and i'm sure you use visualizations as well didn't you to help um, visualization i read quite a lot on i was ne- I, I wasn't that good i thought i wasn't that good at doing it tapping of I, I, I know yeah the old I know this is one of your favourites as well, the old, <laughs> the old EFT tapping. Why is that point there tender? They call it the tender spot, but why is it tender? That one there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the answer for that is. Um, I don't know. Mm. Mm, but we love the tapping. Um, and what about affirmations? Did you use affirmations? Affirmations is something I need to learn to do more intentfully. Um. Just repeating something over and over that you want to be true is very different from affirming something is true. Yeah, but then it's if, also if, working if, that unconscious part of your mind. Yeah, if it's you're working kind of with belief programming systems, that, isn't it? Exactly, because we're, affirmations, one would presume, are to overwrite belief systems that are not serving you. Give me an example of, of an area of life, and I'll let's put it in context. Pick an area of life. Um, for what specifically? That you might use an affirmation for money, relationships, health, anything. Pick one. Well, you know, so say with somebody with anxiety, it's like, you know, I get um, I get anxious every time I go to a party. Right. Um, OK. So for people that don't know, an affirmation is a short, simple phrase that you would repeat to yourself many, many, many times a day. The So let's say somebody wanted to feel more socially confident. Yes. Now, saying, I want to feel socially confident, I want to feel socially confident, I want to feel socially confident, means exactly that. You want to. So I'm learning. That's better. Sorry, God, it sounds like I'm correcting you. No, I'm talking to myself (laughs) here, not you, as it were. (laughs) How rude. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. If you say, I want to, it kind of affirms you're wanting. Yes. You see what I mean? In other words, you haven't got it. Yeah. So you could want for a very long time. But if you say the problem lies, then you go, OK, I have perfect social anxiety having. But the problem is you haven't got it yet. So your mind to go, well, that's bullshit. And that's the trap people get stuck in. Yeah. So and I think yeah. you hit it. It's a it's a bridge. It's a bridging thing. I am learning to be more socially confident. Yes. I am learning to be better in my interactions. I am learning to love myself more. Ing. So it's a verb. It's a process. It's an ing, not a thing. It's not a noun. There's, there's no such thing as a, as a as a bucket of social confidence. It's a feeling. It's an intangible. It's a verb. It's a process. It's an ing, not a thing. I think it's something I coined a while ago. So um, that bridging ing um, thing, you, you can bridge it. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning to be more socially confident. And then turn your attention to the times that you were socially confident. I'm focusing on those. And a, actually, a social confidence trick is to, I taught this to someone once, um, and it, do, it does work. If you go and let's say you went to a party or a seminar or something, you know, generally, unless the party's in full swing, um, you know, people might stand around a bit awkwardly. So rather than feeling self-conscious, you know, it's not, it's not about thinking less of yourself. It's about thinking of yourself less in the best way. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Not about thinking less of yourself oh, I see. Yes, as yes. a lesser person. It's about thinking of yourself, in this case, the awkward self, less. So how to do that? Well, find someone who's in a similar situation and just, just say hi. Maybe they feel just the same way as you do. Everyone makes a friend when they go to one of these seminars, don't they? We've all yes. got a seminar yeah. friend or a friend that we met for a day. You know what I mean? And sometimes you keep it up, sometimes you don't. But that just helps to – you become less – you were more concerned about how someone else feels. And if when you're trying to make someone else feel better, you can try and take the attention off yourself. It doesn't make you a lesser person. It just means you think of yourself less. Yeah, because you're focusing on the other person. Exactly. Yeah. And there and is a time like... to legitimately focus on yourself, of course. I'm not saying do it all the time, but that, that's one quite good, quite good technique. And I think that's sort of, uh, that leads into people that struggle with um, maybe public speaking. 
and they are listening to what, what they're telling themselves. They're listening to what they're saying in their head to themselves. But if they were to bring themselves out and focus on maybe one person in the audience and get themselves out of their head mm. and their focus outside, then they will find it so much easier. Yeah. Be yeah. more confident. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Um, you know, perhaps get a bit of banter going with the audience, bit of bit of rapport building and all that sort of thing. You know, um, checking with the audience, any questions, that sort of thing. Um, and sometimes people don't show they're enjoying it. When it comes to public speaking, sometimes people can sit there really po-faced. And then afterwards they go, that was a fantastic talk. Do you think, what was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, a bit like the same with DJing. Here we go. DJ Dex. Um, sometimes I'll do a gig and people will just sit there and not dance all night. And I think, God, that was crap. But then afterwards, the people come and go, that was fantastic. And I'm like, was it? But to them, it was. All they wanted to do was sit, have a nice social chat with their friends and have a bit of good music in the background. Yeah. It doesn't always have to look like you think it should look like. Yes. And that idea in, its, in and of itself gives you a bit more flexibility yeah. and thought and gets away from that rigidity has to be this way has to be this way or it's a failure well a failure in whose eyes yeah yeah absolutely and so you spend a lot of time djing and doing um various different events don't you yeah i mean it, it obviously um went to zero over um lockdown which is interesting because i'm doing my tax today as well thinking oh <laughs> rather than go I didn't earn that much I'm like I didn't earn that much <laughs> <laughs> really changes doesn't it when it's tax yeah, time yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah only time people go oh shit I earn too much but um but no um I, yes I do do a lot of DJing and part yes parties yes what was the question you asked? Sorry, I was thinking about... But no, that else. was my question. Um, and so, uh, you know, I was just thinking if people wanted to reach out to you to, you know, for your details to find out about, you know, what sort of events you cover and... You know. Oh, oh, is this the shameless plug bit? This is the shameless plug. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, you were, you were so subtle. Go be shameless. You Neil. were so subtle about it. And I was so focused on giving content that I actually forgot <laughs> about myself for a moment. Oh, but isn't that interesting? That that's the point I made though. I was thinking about giving you content and share and sharing these ideas. And I wasn't self-conscious at all because I was more interested in doing a good podcast for you and for the people watching. Yeah. And I felt no anxiety about it whatsoever. There's a takeaway for you. There's a takeaway. And I can show you how to do that. Uh, Neillong.com, um, teaching DJing, uh, teaching the art of it, all the aspects of it. Um how to plan the music, how to mix the music, how to how just to do it really in a really cool way. Mm. I um, help people get their podcasts online as well. So if you've got a message, got a story you want to get out there, I can do all the technical bits for you and help you with all the promotional bits of that. I do and Neil is comedy. very good at that. I must just jump in. He is very good at that. And I have and to setting say... Setting it all up, the podcast and... And well, actually, you no, you're, you're a bit of a weird client because you do most of it yourself. Um, but a lot of people don't want to, but... You did, and you're really good at it. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really only a, a guest producer on your podcast rather than a full time feature. But it's okay, I've processed it. Um, no, your podcast is brilliant, and the download, the, the amount of downloads you're getting is, is. I know everyone thinks, oh, I wish I could have more, but trust me, your numbers, I've seen them uh, as your producer, and they are very, very good. So you're really, you're clearly hitting a very, you know, a, 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 sounds crass, but a market that really needs it, or a group of people that really needs what it what you have to say, but who doesn't need or want mental health, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So the best place for people to contact you is? neillong.com. neillong.com. And if they wanted to come and um, and and be entertained by your comedy sketches? Um, it's all on the website. Um, and um, it's, all, it's all on my website. I, I work with... Um, wonderful couple called Graham and Elaine who've built a comedy business literally from nothing since lockdown and now they're really getting the big names on and it's wonderful to watch them fly and what they've done and that's wholelotacomedy.com whole lotta w-h-o-l-e lotta l-o-t-t-a comedy.com and they've got some great acts on there oh, including gosh. me sometimes <laughs> oh we'll have to check it out so well Neil thank you so much it's been a delight Having you on the Thank you very much indeed. 
Okay, keep doing, keep doing what you're doing. You're an absolute bright light in the mental health field. And I will say, shout this publicly, I would thoroughly endorse anything this lady does or writes or um, absolutely bloody brilliant. Absolute guiding, guiding star, bright light. Oh, that's very kind, Neil. Thank you so much. It's the truth. And I didn't even pay him for it. <laughs> okay great so thank you to everybody for listening and before we go make sure you subscribe to the podcast on apple itunes or wherever you listen so you never miss an episode and let us know what you think of the show and show some love your favorite podcast by leaving us a review on spotify and five stars oh and sorry and five stars <laughs> if you don't mind <laughs> So thank you to everybody for listening and I look forward to chatting with you in the next episode.